Hello and welcome back to Boys on Film. I'm Phil Marriott, joined once again by Sean Vickers, and we are covering the BFI Flair 2023 Film Festival, having a really good time, but we're thrilled to be joined by our very special guest who features strongly in this documentary that we've reviewed already, which is called How to Tell a Secret, a very powerful documentary. But our very special guest is the fabulous Ender McGratton, otherwise known as Vader. Hi, Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. How are you? Great, really good. I just had breakfast in the Standard. I've been cuckooing in the Standard. I'm staying in this particular hotel in King Cross, but I go across the road <laughs> and I use all the glam services. <laughs> it's been a good morning. You guys have met already, right? You, you're friends already. We are friends and we have friends in common and we'll be kikiing later on tonight, right, Sean? Correct. <laughs> I was so, so Vader, I was saying to Phil, because we did the review yesterday, and I have to say it comes up pretty well, but no. So um, I was saying that when I, we met just after um, Vivian had performed for Pride last year, and we met, for, we were sat at brunch, and that was the first time you told me about how to tell a secret. And we talked about this yesterday on the review, and that was nine months ago, which is amazing, really. Yeah, it's and it, it's like a little snowball that just keeps getting bigger, this documentary, you know. It's been kicking around for about a year now, and it just seems to get picked up every time. It's like, what's next? What's next? It gets picked up by another festival and rolls on to another place. Myself and Robbie just got back from Sydney World Pride, where we screened how to tell a secret i've started calling it ho to tell a secret i have to come back <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> i think it's deserved though i mean it's such an amazing documentary we were talking about this in detail in the review which we won't spoil at the moment but it's something that i think needs to be seen by everybody how would you sum up the documentary for those who don't know much about it I guess the word hybrid gets thrown around a lot, but I think that really suits it because the origins of the documentary are a play called Rapids. So it has a very strong, dramatic, theatrical feel to it. It's beautifully shot. I think um, that the passion that so many people had for it, like the cinematographers and the actors who were involved, really comes through. And then for the, those of us living with HIV, we couldn't really be more passionate about the subject. And I think that's what makes it so special is the amount of heart i guess that's that's put into it but essentially it's a documentary about navigating disclosure um up around your hiv status which is problematic to say the least for most people living with hiv and uh, and that i guess is a really good reason why everyone should see it <laughs> exactly exactly um yeah we, we i mean it, it's um i think you've touched on something there Vage, which i think is super interesting because we were talking about um, the Sean Dunn play Rapids yesterday because you feel there's there's the documentary element to the to the to the film, and then there was something really theatrical. And we were saying it's quite seamless how the two like beautifully work together. Um, was that by how did that come about? You know, was that Sean? Was that Anna? Was that the whole team? How did that come about? Because it felt so natural and so easy. I think it's it's quite funny that when you take a documentary filmmaker like Anna and you put them with a theatre maker like Sean, that it could be a recipe for disaster or in this case for magic. So I think that's really why that comes together so well, is that they're both working from different perspectives, but very much working together. And then, of course, I wasn't in the play or featured in the play. so. I also think that I was that egg that you use to bind your ingredients together because it is a documentary about my life too, but the things that I do in the film are very theatrical. <laughs> so I think I help to, to bridge both worlds, you know. I think you're absolutely right. It's like Sean said, it feels seamless because you've got those two elements. You've got the dramatic element, kind of reenacting the play, but also the real life stories. But you're right, because it feels like it's people that have come together that know exactly how each other feel and understand each other's stories. But also, I think a lot of people watching will be able to relate to it as well. So it feels very cohesive. I think it's interesting when you talk about HIV, and I talk about HIV a lot. I like to say I used to be living with HIV, and now I'm living off HIV. But <laughs> 
But when you talk about HIV, I think that the, it's the shame theme of shame that people relate to. And often we have people speak to us after the film or after the talks that we do about something that's totally unrelated to HIV, but really has touched them and helped them in some way to realize that this shame that they might have about all kinds of things, fertility problems, toenail fungus i've heard it all <laughs> you know um, but i think that's where a lot of the power of the film uh, lies in this idea that you know um, as sean says in the film you're only as sick as your secrets <laughs> you know i'm absolutely intrigued about tom mcginty the dice yes. man yeah i know a little bit about the dice man but can you tell us a little bit more because i'm just intrigued about how they feature uh within within the film um, well, actually, it was Sean and Anna's idea for me to reenact a performance by the Dice Man. The reason being partly because they knew how passionate I was about him, but also because of this incredible interview that he gave on The Late Late Show, which is featured in the documentary, which is probably in Irish history, you know, the biggest and most significant HIV AIDS disclosure that's ever going to happen because he did it at a time when people were still dying and he didn't have long left himself and he bravely went on the late late show in a very Catholic Ireland before Sinead O'Connor ripped up a picture of Pope, a very different social landscape and was so open and so honest about what, what he was going through and he was received so well by Gay Byrne who was the, the host and an icon in our country um, and by embraced by the whole country and it really changed things for people living with HIV AIDS what he did so that was why they wanted to include him but then for me I had been obsessed with him since I was a kid because there was only a couple of gay bars in Ireland when I was a teenager in the late 80s and 90s and there were no queer people no queer representation so the dice man in some bag standing in Grafton Street, you know, doing his Mona Lisa thing, um, really spoke to me. So when I was about 14, 15, I would spend my Saturdays in town stalking the Dice Man. I cut to mid-90s, uh, sadly before he, before he passed, I got to know him a bit better. I was working at a cafe called Mr. Pussy's Cafe Deluxe, and Mr. Pussy and, and Tom were very close. And at this stage, the HIV, the AIDS had, had given him dementia, so he needed a lot of care. And one of the places he would go was the cafe and maybe wait around until the place closed so that someone would walk him home or take him home. A lot of his friends would spend the night to make sure he was okay. And so he'd be waiting around the cafe a lot. And that's when I got my chance to get to know him a bit better. Um, yeah, which is funny, you know. It's like this thing where a puppy is trying to play with an older dog. That was kind of... <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I love your tribute at the end. It's It was so beautifully played out and shot as well. I mean, it's a really nice way to to kind of round off that documentary. I mean, you feature a lot of activists, HIV activists in this in this documentary. Was there anyone maybe that you considered or you wanted to feature that, that wasn't there for any reason or maybe someone that you'd like to work with in the future, someone that, someone that has been important to you in, in your life? Well, I think it would have been great to have Panty be involved in our documentary. She's such an icon and a HIV activist and a really good friend of mine. But she has so many documentaries of her own. Yeah. <laughs> Politics involved. Um, but that's someone I would have loved to involve or someone I'd love to work with in some way in the HIV space moving forward. Yeah. Panty was just on Dancing with the Stars, funnily enough, in Ireland. And um, we did, myself and Shirley and her did a Hocus Pocus number on Dancing with the Stars, which really blew people's minds, I'm proud to say. <laughs> the following week, I blow your mind and your mates. And the following <laughs> week, it's too we good. Did a call, uh, to, it's a Sin by the Pet Shop Boys. And the, the performance was about... Uh, living with HIV and she did an awful lot to get the U equals U message out there to the general public so that was pretty amazing and that's the kind of activism that I think is so exciting and, and your podcast has been has been so well received you know I think I think that's incredible I mean what with I mean there's there's it's all kind of like small pieces and it all come together what with this amazing film on your podcast 
um, really about visibility and the message. I think it's really fantastic. Did what came first? Was it the podcast? Was it the film? Where, where does the you know where did the creative outlet start? Shall I say? And how did you meet Robbie? I've known Robbie since he was Mr. Gay Ireland sometime in the noughties. <laughs> a drag pageant together and then we made out and then his friends took him away from me and I had to leave the club because he had ruined my makeup, like totally ate the face <laughs> off. So that's a problem. But, um, but the podcast and the movie really happened all at the same time. I, during lockdown, I was doing shows online from my kitchen and I was talking a bit about HIV and performing uh, the song that I wrote about HIV disclosure. It's called I Came Out One Night. And people would reach out to me um, in my DMs to talk about it. People living with HIV who were in the closet like I had been, or people living with HIV who were just feeling very isolated. Um, and that made me think I need to do something with this time to uh, connect with people who are struggling. And that's where the idea for the podcast came along. Um, so I had been ruminating this idea for a while. And then on the first day of filming of How to Tell a Secret, Robbie, myself and Michael were sitting around waiting for our scene. And we were having such a laugh. Uh, after a few minutes, we were doing this thing called uh, the T-cell block tango. Well, <laughs> we were staging our own little musical while we were waiting. And that's when I realized that Robbie would be the perfect person to do it with. And then, as you see in the documentary, he went on national television on the Tommy Tiernan show to talk about living with HIV. And he smashed it. He represented us so well and, and did an amazing job. So the next morning, I messaged him to say, well done and thank you. Um, and also, I have got to admit, I was feeling a bit panicked that maybe my chance to nab him for my podcast had gone by because now his profile had just raised some more. So I mentioned it to him in an uh, Instagram message and straight away he said, absolutely, yes, let's do it. So once we mentioned that to Sean and Anna, they asked if they could film us doing it. So that scene that you see us recording the podcast in the movie is our first episode, our first time sitting down to do it. And it's crazy that even by the time the movie came out, our podcast had sort of become a runaway train. It's hard for me to what's happened really for us because as I said, we just came back from Sydney. We recorded a whole season of our podcast in Sydney. I could never have dreamt a couple of years ago that this little project that we were doing would take us you know, to the other side of the world to work with people in the HIV space there. And that also has opened up even more opportunities for us to do more of the same so it's a very exciting time for our little podcast really yeah and season four as well we were talking about longevity with your night at the george in, in uh -huh. and obviously you've been doing that since the 90s which you know again we need to to give you applause for that but this uh, can i just say the podcast you feature some of the most handsome guests i mean for me i'm thinking handsome guests on a podcast that doesn't quite work because you need to see them but i guess the film kind of showed that element of you visually so is that something that you you thought about doing as well filming your podcast because i mean the podcast is great maybe a lot of people seem to film these days but i enjoy the freedom so much of yeah. what i do is about having to look right so I love, I love not having to look right um yeah so i i guess the other thing about the guests though is i call a lot of those guests thirst trap guests to be honest not that you know that they <laughs> Their values apart from their good looks but <laughs> I, I associate hiv with people who look more like me <laughs> you know they're super skinny <laughs> um, you know uh, frail looking people i'm such a bad representative of hiv for that reason i look like an ex-drug user <laughs> even though i'm not <laughs> But, you know, these thirst trap healthy guys from the gym, sexy guys, I think really works very well to help to combat the stigma. But also we use uh, drag queens and other influential activists and stars, drag stars to help us get our message out there. And I think it's that mix that really helps uh, us to keep our audience engaged, you know. We'd love to have more women. Yeah, well, of yeah, of course. But that that's one thing that really st stuck with me about the documentary is that you had so many positive stories and uh, going through the experiences of being diagnosed and, and going through all that that bad stuff. Um, you, you can't, a lot of you, it featured, came out telling 
telling stories of 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 hope and 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 also that you you kind of like realize good things in life coming through that and that was really nice to see i thought yeah it's a funny one you know because it's uh, for me it's such a personal journey but when i think of that person who was filming how to tell a secret i there's so much that has changed since then i've learned so much about hiv and connected with people literally all around the world and it's funny because i look at it now and much as i love it i see a much more naive activist <laughs> i see someone who's a bit more troubled these days the expression i throw around more is no drama i say no drama all the time which is sort of <laughs> the opposite of what was going on then you know um just because i guess you know you realize once you get out of the hiv closet how damaging shame can be in your life and how using trauma or propagating stories of trauma or talking a lot about people's shame without balancing it with the happier side of life a happier story or or acknowledging that these days people who are living with hiv will live as long and as happily as anyone else um i think it's important to kind of make space for that too with young people who are getting diagnosed now they don't need to spend 10 years in the closet like me i have some friends who maybe spend 10 weeks instead <laughs> you know and listen to all of our podcasts and got their heads together and then just came out on instagram you know a few weeks later and maybe it's not as simple as that they might have still had to process it but i guess the environment has changed so much that i'm careful cautious about prescribing my story to everybody else and this idea of people becoming hiv positive uh, them understanding that it's not a big deal and not going through any drama or trauma wouldn't make for a great documentary but <laughs> it makes for a happier life you know Absolutely. so what so what happens next veda so you're at flair so what's happening at flair right now and then what happens next with um, how to tell a secret well tonight we've got the first screening of how to tell a secret at flair and we're going to have a q and a anna myself and rob uh, my, anna myself and sean are going to be talking which should be a lot of fun there's two more shows saturday and sunday um yeah saturday it's almost sold out Sunday there's still a few seats if anyone wants to go and see it. Um and what's happening next for how to tell a secret? Good question. There's a few more festivals I think coming up but I'm sort of in the dark to tell you the truth. <laughs> That's so exciting, um, isn't it? That it sounds so like exciting. there's real scope for this as well and so many people need to see it that won't get the chance at Flair. So yeah, we wish you all the best with it. It's fantastic to see. Thank you. I think I uh, hopefully I maybe it has my screen has frozen has it no you're okay <laughs> doing oh, the kylie <laughs> do, the, do the wobble just do the shake yeah, shake it off just shake it off yeah just checking um i'd love to see how to maybe on a streaming service sometime next year uh, i think it would be great for a lot more people to have access to it but for now it's just going from festival to festival and strength to strength which is great um yeah and i'm sitting here with a script i have a new script i'm filming something tomorrow oh, and wow. sunday in dublin oh is that something that other people don't know about is that a first for us an exclusive <laughs> exclusive yeah, yeah! Woo! Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you get to london much i mean it would be great to do the bars and dinner and all the rest of that great stuff that comes with that i do I'd love to do that. I do get over here a bit. Um yeah, let's do it. <laughs> But well, our friend Vivian's in town and pretty much whenever she comes to London, I try to come to London as well. Sean knows that. So, um and then I come over for the odd show with the Glory. I love the Glory. Shout out to all the kids of the Glory. Yes. Thank you. So, I'll see you next time. You're seeing Sean tonight. But yeah, we wish you all the best with it, Vader. It's fantastic to chat with you and we love the documentary and all the best with it. Thanks Bill. Thanks so much. Thanks.